afternoon to everyone. Appreciate you tuning in and being present for the uh, work session. First order of business would be to conduct roll call. Commissioner Sana Gregory. Present. Commissioner Devont, Devont Davis. Present. Commissioner Gail Hambrick. Present. Commissioner Felicia Franklin. Present. Commissioner Sana Gregory. Thank you. I'm here. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We are all present and accounted for. The next item is preliminary items for the next BLC meeting. Is there any item that the uh, com any commissioner would like to discuss? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think I, I did send an email to Jack. Well, I'll wait. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Frank. Okay. Um, I did send over a quick question about the 17 items. Uh, I'm just uh, looking forward to seeing what those items are that we are going to be in receipt on. Also, to make the board aware, we've got one other item we're going to have to add which is um, the receipt of a uh, grant that we get every year. So I believe that um, Rochelle Dennis has already sent that over to uh, Attorney Reed so that we can get that on the agenda and there's enough time to do so. And it's just for us to be able to receive the grant from, the grant from um, Food Well Alliance that all the commissioners receive each year. Thank you to the hard work of our, our constituent aides and uh, communications managers. Yeah, he's uh, nodding over here saying that he is, is in receipt of that. Is that correct? That's correct, Mr. Chair. Um, good uh, afternoon, um, board. Uh, I, Chief Roberts did send over a copy of the court order, and the 17 items are basically a number of bikes that um, have been received, 10-speed, um, various uh, mount, mountain bike, so um, that, those are the 17 uh, items, Commissioner Franklin. Bicycles. Okay, wonderful. Um, let me go ahead and make this caveat that I no longer work for this company, but I pray to God they don't get an accident policy before they get on them bikes. You know, I don't know if everybody in their 20s is still can ride a bike like that, but I'm uh, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, any other items for discussion? All right, then we'll move on to the work session discussion items. And I will let the board know that there are three items that we'll, we will not be discussing. The first is the Duck Memorial plaque, uh, which was placed on this agenda in error. The Solid Waste Authority presentation, we're awaiting some more additional inf updated information. Uh, we want to make sure we have as much information as possible before we present it in its totality. And the lastly is the OPM presentation. Uh, that one is due to illness. So the first presentation will be IT department. Mr. Brookins. Good evening, Chairman. Afternoon, Chairman, Vice Chair, Board. I take that off. Appreciate the opportunity to present to you today. So what I wanted to do, um, you actually get me twice. Um, two in a row. <laughs> and so for this first one, what I wanted to do is present to you an update on the IT department, um, kind of where we are overall and some of the things that we've done and some of the projects that we've um, got coming up, coming down the pipe. Okay. <clears throat> so the IT department is um, led by myself. Um, and also my assistant director, Jamie Montalvo, and our chief information security officer, Brian Garrison. Um, as you can see, we, we have uh, a wide ranging um, things that we attend to. Um, and I would not expect you to read each of the names on here, but it was just, a, uh, just to show you our org chart. So we have overall 71 staff assigned, uh, divided up into nine different divisions. Um, our information security division is responsible, is, is led by our chief information security officer, and it is responsible for protecting the county's data, all of our, and our um, information. We have two cybersecurity analysts on staff who report to them, to him as well. Our enterprise application support division 
is responsible for managing our off-the-shelf products, our, our software packages that we have purchased and implemented in the county, things like uh, the Tyler platform, uh, Kronos, the Fife, uh, the CAD systems, GIS, things like that. Excuse our, me. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but unless it's just on my laptop, I can't read any of this. It's a little small box. You know, don't Can you make it take up the whole screen? <laughs> Well, that's I just asked him if he can make it uh, take up the whole screen. Uh, yeah, right. I, I can't see any of that. I did, and I definitely want a copy of the off because I couldn't see that either. And maybe it's just my laptop, so maybe I, if I just get a copy of the presentation, I'm not sure if that's the case with everybody else, but I can't see a thing. It, it's, it's the same for me. It's the same on all of them, and I, and I apologize for this. We were trying out some new presentation software, so the one of the things that the board had asked about previously was being able to see the presenter while the presentation was going on and so we were trying out the software. It works really well when you only have two things on the screen um, but with this many windows on there so if you so, give me so just a ask, second I'll so you I can, said you can? I can change it if you give me just a second. Okay. Sorry, that is not working like it's supposed to. Commissioners, I will, um, and, and being conscious of time, I, I will send you all a copy of this PowerPoint, of both PowerPoints that I've been given tonight um, for you as we go through this, if you're. Okay, so yeah, just make sure that you send out a copy of that uh, and leave it at, on that size right there. The, uh, that's a little better, but still yes, sir. hard to see. So I understand. For future references, if we, as long as we continue this and you do presentations, make sure do the do the largest screen. We were hoping that that this would be give us the the, the viewing of the, like I said the presenter and the presentation at the same time. Um, we tried. Okay. Proceed on, please. Okay. Um, our archives and records. Uh, division handles all of the county's boxed records. We have about 23,000 boxes of records that we store in the warehouse. Um, and they are also leading the digitization of those records into our, re our main records management system called Fife. Um, our client services division are the, um, the technicians that come out and, and fix things. Um, PCs, laptops, and printers, desk phones, software, iPads. We have about 8,000 devices in the county that we maintain. Our technology services division um, is, handles the administrative functions of the department, which will be budgeting and purchasing, as well as the condu conducting the uh, technical training and uh, issuing all of our cellular telephones. Um, continuing on, our software development division is our newest division. Um, it is led by our software architect, and currently they are tasked with developing the new uh, court management system replacing the old the old uh, green screen system um, we have completed the jury system which we're all excited about and, and, and clerk wills is also excited about um, but one of the things that we're uh, really happy with is the the different technology that we're using and developing the new system bringing in using a DevOps model which basically um, puts all of the developers in all of the all of the different time frames and so they kind of get an ownership of the product as well as using um, things like artificial intelligence to help us map the data that we currently have so we're not spending time uh, doing that manually. So we're really excited about that. Our web technologies division handles the county websites, all the departmental websites, and then the things that we've been working on most recently like the Clayton Cares website as well as the eviction relief website. Um, and I'll have a, a um, couple of pictures from that later on. Our communications technologies division handles all of the portable and mobile radios that are in the vehicles 
and the, the officers carry, as well as all the lights and sirens. And there's about 2,300 different radios. Um, and then finally, our network infrastructure and operations is responsible for keeping the data available. Um, they are, they handle 300 virtual servers, about 100 physical servers, and all of the security and access control systems throughout the county. We have about 500 cameras all across the county that, that are all in the same system that we maintain. Also the uh, county email, internet connection, things like that. <clears throat> So in response to um, COVID-19, when we did the shutdown, it was interesting that all of the departments were sent home, um, still wanted to work, but we were not prepared at that time to work. And so my staff worked through the shutdown, <clears throat> providing laptops to as many people as we could. We were digging in um, boxes that we had, the training laptops set aside, they were every laptop that we could find we, um, we were found, we are able to issue out and to keep the courts working, some of our other offices working who, who, th who flourish on a, in a remote environment. So we were able to, to keep the county business going with only a minor uh, inconvenience to some of them. So uh, during that time, we worked with uh, Director Rogers and her department to procure as fast as we could additional laptops. But as you can imagine, um, every business and government that shut down had the same problem. They were all looking for laptops. And so we were, we were able to secure a certain number as we went through um, until the, 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 the logistics kind of caught back up at the end of it. So we were finally able to get ahead of the game. But at that point in time, it was rough. And so what we were able to do um, when you, we use the CARES Act funding for most of this stuff is the procurement of uh, 1,150 laptops with docking stations. Um, the idea is that we are going to uh, begin, we're actually in the middle of it or in the beginning phases of replacing the desktop computers with the laptops. This will be so that if something was to happen, we get a building closed down. We don't have to be in a pandemic to close down a building. So this will put everybody in a position. They can take their laptop, everything's on it. They go home and they're still and they're still um, functioning. They can still do their job. Um, additionally, we were able to upgrade the core network infrastructure at the Justice Center. Um, the Justice Center is our largest concentrated user base. And so we needed additional bandwidth um, to handle the influx of the remote connectivity into that building. And so we, we added a dedicated internet circuit to that building, as well as um, the, the core networking equipment um, that keeps everybody together. Um, in addition to that, we installed thermal imaging cameras that you guys have seen here and in every other county building. Um, as we come in, inst we worked with the company to install and configure those. And we installed two new um, core, we call them VX rail servers. Basically, it is a way for us to manage the, the information that the county creates. And so instead of having your laptop um, and you lose the data on the laptop, your session runs inside of this session, inside of this server. And so all of the data stays on the county's network all the time. Nothing goes off. We don't fear if we lose a laptop or somebody breaks it, we're not losing any data. It's all, it's all safe, secure, and backed up every night. <clears throat> Additionally, we upgraded the county's firewall. We replaced our Cisco firewalls with Palo Alto firewalls that will provide a, a much more comprehensive and robust protection to the, to the network. Um, it also, most firewalls control uh, traffic in and out of the network. Um, the benefit of the Palo Alto devices is it controls the traffic within the network as well. And so we're not seeing viruses that would come in and then spread across the network. They would be isolated at, from, the, from their entry point. It wouldn't be able to go left or right. They're just stopped right at the door. Um, one of the things that took the biggest shift, and this is not just us, but this is for all of, all of you guys as well, is our shift to Zoom meetings. Um, between, within the last 12 months, we, we've had over 3,700 Zoom meetings that the IT department has helped moderate um, a lot of those. We're averaging about 300 Zoom meetings a month. This includes courts, uh, the court cases, the, the court hearings as well. And then the, the other platform that we have, Microsoft Teams, we're averaging about 570 meetings per month. So a lot of people are doing a lot of remote 
networking and a lot of working together through these platforms that we were able to, to onboard real quick. Um, the learning curve, the, all of the users were great um, and they were excited to, hatch, to continue to work and not actually have to come in. Um, which kind of leads us to the next one is the, we created the COVID-19 tracking dashboard working with the fire and emergency services department as well as cr working with HR to create a teleworking application and a reporting tool that allows the managers of those employees to track their tasks that they do every week. And then we had to do on the back end of it a lot of programming changes to the old siege system, the old court system, to uh, allow it to take into account some of the Zoom information so that when they send out um, subpoenas and court notices, it includes the Zoom information. It's not just coming in, come into the courthouse, it's here's your name, here's your password, this is how you connect to your hearing. So sounds easy, it's not. It takes a lot of work on the back end. It doesn't so. sound easy. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to some positive things. Um, so the IT department has had three, um, four major SPLOS projects in the last two SPLOSs. Um, our data center and our and archive and record center, um, as well as our new IT training center and the radio system. And so what we've done in July of 2019 is we were able to refurbish and open a new data center. And the data center is on Government Circle, and I don't really want to be much more specific than that. Um, it is in a hardened um, and secure facility, and we feel really good about the, about the area or about the, the environment that all of our, the, the county's heartbeat essentially is in. Um, and so we're happy with that. It also houses our, our service desk um, and most of our network infrastructure and operations staff. Additionally, we have our new um, archive facility. So this facility um, it is also on government circle, um, houses the county's permanent records. So the, the, the one that you guys are familiar with, the one on Battle Creek Road, was for all the records. Um, our archives and records team have worked really hard. In about five years, they've gone from about 45,000 boxes to 23,000 boxes all because the county was not managing our, our records and retention cycles of our records. And so we worked really hard with all the departments and elected officials, and they were signing off on them, and we were destroying the records as, as fast as we could that we don't have to retain anymore. Um, this facility will hold the records that are permanent records. So you can see in the picture um, the deed books, the red books on there, so those are the things that we have to keep forever. There's lots of su superior court records that have a permanent retention on it. And so this facility here will be where we keep our permanent records. Um, and then in July of last year, we opened up the Technology Services and Training Center. It's a um, fantastic 11,000 square foot building. Um, and you, there are some of the pictures on the inside. Uh, and I know that some of you have been there. Um, we're really proud of it. Um, one of the things that we really like is it gives us two or one large training room that can be subdivided into two rooms. Um, we do a lot of training in the county. These, these rooms, even during this time, have been booked up as we're onboarding new software and doing the training for it. So we um, are proud of the facility. We take a lot of pride in it. And so we're, we're appreciative of uh, the support from the voters and the, and the county commissioners on that project. are some of our cybersecurity initiatives. So it, protecting the county's network and the county's data is really a lot of work. Um, there's always somebody waiting to sneak in, always want somebody looking to try and get some of your information. And so when with our chief information security officer and his two cybersecurity analysts, we are analyzing logs, we are checking uh, patches, we are doing everything that we can to keep the county's data safe and secure. So every week we go through a penetration testing with the Department of Homeland Security. Um, and, the, and what we're doing now is we worked with uh, the Atlanta Area Security Initiative, or Urban Area Security Initiative, UASI. Um, we have a $63,000 grant that we were doing penetration testing on, on the network. And so every point of entry into the network is being tested to give us um, any, any threats or any changes, any recommendations that we need to make. Um, also, once you're in, 
given certain credentials, how far in you can get. So how much information can you impact with different user, user IDs and passwords. Um, we are also doing, um, you guys have probably seen some of these, the cybersecurity awareness videos, some of our phishing um, testing that we're doing, testing to employees. Um, we're, we're actually not too bad. We only have a 12% click rate, which is, which is a lot, but when I talk to my other peers in other counties, they're, you know, their first one was 50, 60%. So our, our employees are, are um, they're paying attention to it. And they, they know, they, most of them know um, something fishy when they see it and they'll send it to us and we appreciate that, so, and that awareness. Um, we did complete a comprehensive audit of the county network design, oops. <clears throat> and so, which will lead us to a SPLOS 2021 project that is the replacement of the county's data infrastructure. Um, the current infrastructure is a bit old um, and so we're looking to replace that with equipment that is um, modern and state-of-the-art and gives us some addition, additional um, things that we don't have right now. And so again, that's, that's a SPLOS 2021 project and we appreciate that as well. Um, in April, between now and, and September, we're looking for the implementation of our cybersecurity incident response plan, uh, working with uh, UASI and with uh, fire and EMS on, on that, to kind of keep our safe. If an incident does happen, this is what we do, step one, step two, this is what we contact. So having a plan is important. Um, we don't want to end up like um, other municipalities who've been hit, so. Um, and then additionally, uh, in this budget year, the next fiscal year, we're looking to develop a comprehensive information security policy. So this would be how do we secure and manage the information that we have how do we manage who has access to that information? Because the last thing you want is somebody to have access to some information that they don't need. Um, that just, it's just asking for trouble. And so what we're looking to do is to kind of right size our permissions to make sure that everybody has um, access to what they're supposed to and they don't have access to what they're not supposed to. And so all of that, that is a, a comprehensive document um, that will take a while, but we have a good team and, and they're gonna do a good job on it, I know. So let's talk about some celebration points. Um, some of the things that we've done, and some of this was done in response to COVID-19, is the implementation of the one-span electronic signatures. Now, it's used by multiple departments, uh, most notable finance and central services, and so we knew that with the county shut down, we still had to do business, and so people still were retiring, uh, people still were signing contracts, we were still doing, um, bid, you know, that work has to go on. And so we were able to take this one span software and it starts to, um, and accepts digital signatures. And so all we're doing is emailing documents back and forth. It's safe and secure and it's verified. So uh, we're really happy about that. Um, we've assisted HR with the transition to a new benefit management system, um, to the smart bin system. It is a lot of work. I had, I had uh, Jamie and, um, two of her staff tied up with that for a long time, for many, many weeks, to working with uh, Ms. Ambles and her staff to get that system implemented. And I, it went well, um, everybody's happy with it. And so we, we did that, that was a big deal. Um, one of the things, another thing that we did is we implemented the Exclaimer email signature solution. So at the bottom of all your emails, what, one of the things that we had is, is maybe you'd see your signature, maybe you wouldn't. Maybe you'd see your, the, the county logo, maybe you wouldn't. And so with this, with this solution, it allowed us to kind of do away with that and everything is centrally managed so that every time you send an email out, regardless of what device you're sending it from, your computer, your iPad, your phone, you're gonna see the same signature with the same credentials and that same information on it every time. And so we're, it's, a, it's a real positive look to the county, um, kind of working with um, the communications uh, team and, and, and going through the branding effort. Um, Another thing we did was we transitioned all the employees, or most of them, to Office 365. So all of our email, for the most part, is now cloud-based, um, and so we're, we're happy about that. Microsoft has a solid um, platform for us to run it on, and it's uh, reliable and uh, actually takes some of the work off of us from as administrator standpoint. So um, another thing we've done is we've implemented electronic signatures in the magistrate court. Um, so what had happened was that these magistrate judges who were still conducting work while we were shut down, 
or conducting court would go home, they would print a 20 page document, they would sign it, they would scan it, and they would email it. And then the next person would print it, sign it, email it. It just got to be too much for them to handle. So we work with them on this solution that allows them to bring up the document. It's very similar to OneSpan, but because it's being generated by the old court system, we can't use OneSpan with it. So this solution was a, um, a solution that my team came up with that allows them to import their signature into a document, save it, and email it to the next to these to the next person, and, and on and on it goes. And so it saves a lot of a lot of printing costs, a lot of paper costs, a lot of toner costs, um, as well as saving us some worry about where that information is ending up once they print it and sign it. Where's the hard copy? Are they bringing it back? So. Um, and then we implemented just recently a countywide text messaging program that you guys have seen some of the text from when we had gas fuel pump problems and um, th email issues. We would send out a text through that. Um, some of our long-term kind of things that we've been working on for a while is these, the go live of these new software platforms. So the IAS world, the tax commissioner, and the tax assessor's office finally went live in February. Um, the new My Senior Center software as well as an upgrade of the RecTrack software for Parks and Recreation is live. Um, that was a lot of work, but I know for that, uh, Ms. Tauter, uh, Strader Tanks is happy with that software. She worked really hard with the seniors, so she worked with the stakeholders to get a solution that they all were happy with. It was easy for them to understand. It was easy for uh, senior services to, under, to, to do and to roll it out. And so everybody's happy with it when we count that one as a big win for the. Um, like I said earlier, our jury management system, so that's done. Um, we are having to make some of the changes since with the reintroduction of the juries and the grand juries, so we're having to make some changes to accommodate larger jury pools. I can't tell you any more about that because I just don't know, but <laughs> you know, see some changes um, in response to the Superior Court clerk and the Chief Judge and the uh, District Attorney that we've been working through, um, and so we're working with them on that. Um, the introduction of the GovQA, the Open Records Management Portal, um, that we recently went live with. Uh, the probate court went live with new software called CJT. Um, it replaces a, an old um, antiquated system that they had. Um, Judge Ferguson and her staff working through some issues, but overall they seem uh, fairly pleased with it. And then the, um, finally the migration and then go live of the new Clayton 2.0 which includes the constituent request system built into it. And then on top of all of that, we have all of the new buildings open and that we had to put all the technology in and get those going for them as well. Okay. <laughs> you out of breath? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right, so these are, the, these are the things we're excited about. This stuff is coming soon. Um, so the police and sheriff's department is bringing on a records management system on in April. Uh, we've been working really hard with Central Square on that um, and they're, everybody's excited about this and so um, this adds the functionality that the, the police department previously didn't have. Um, the Sheriff's Department had a little bit of it, police had an even smaller amount of it. This is a comprehensive records management solution for them that will do a um, really nice job in helping them with that. Uh, we're also implementing the Comprise solution in the libraries. Um, Director Lett has talked about it a little bit, but basically it's a new system, a comprehensive system that will do PC reservations, online book reservations, online fine, fine payments, and, and online room reservations for the library system. Um, we're in the, the beginning stages, as I said earlier, of our laptop deployment to the departments. It actually is a lot of work to replace somebody's desktop, and when you replace the entire department at one time, it's even more. And so we're, we've got staff working through that as we go. Um, working with uh, transportation and development on the new fuel management solution. Um, we'll be upgrading our MUNIS and InterGov platforms later this year. Um, we are looking to start the replacement of the portable uh, public safety radios, the portable radios. <clears throat> that was a project in the 2021 SPLOST, um, another one, so we're excited about that. So the, the radios that were bought in 2015 are no longer supported by uh, Motorola, and so we have to look to replace them. But we're, one of the things that we're the most excited about with this is the adding of the, um, essentially, it's the GPS on the radios. And so dispatch will be able to know where the officers are when they key the radio up. It shows up on the map. 
Are those radials in 2017, were those the interoperable radials? Yes, sir. They all have the interoperable um, component to it, yes, so sir. they will. So they will also, the new ones will also have that same mm -hmm. capability. Yes, sir. Okay. They're all, it's called P25. It's the, it's the standard across the network, so everybody, all of the municipalities who, who put them in, uh, we can communicate with all of them. Good. Um, we're looking at the network infrastructure replacement that I talked about earlier. Um, we are actually designing a new county website. So our last design came out in about 2016. Uh, it's best practice to redesign every three to four years. We're a little late on it, but um, we're happy with what we've got so far, and I have a sneak peek of that I'll show you guys in just a second. Um, working with Total Marketing 365, as well as the communications, the Office of Communications as well to get that. Um, we're also working with um, the Clayton State University. Um, there was a site called One Clayton that we are working with them to move it off of, they had a Wix site before, which is kind of a free hosting solution. We're actually gonna move it to um, a full-fledged website um, that county staff will begin to maintain so that the information is current and, and available to them. And then one of the last things that we're working on is what we're calling LEETS, which is a law enforcement employee tracking system. So basically, uh, we worked with Chief Roberts and his staff to put together a system that would allow us or allow them to see why officers are separated from their police departments. And so it's, if it's, an, if it's a, an issue or a bad incident that caused them to be fired or resign, um, that department would put this information into the LEAT system, which would be available to the county and all of the cities at this time from the beginning um, so that we can at least start to manage internally and then where it grows from here, I, I don't know, but it is something that Chief Roberts is really looking forward to to make sure that we get the right officers coming in. All right, so this, um, this is a preview of what the new county homepage is gonna look like. Um, it's got lots of colors. It incorporates all of the new branding initiative that, um, things that we did. Um, and it's just a real vibrant, really nice looking site. Um, we're working on that. So we also have the, like I said, the new One Clayton. And I apologize, that's really small on this screen. But it is, it will be a resource site that you're used to now with the One Clayton. It will change to oneclayton.org. Um, this will allow us the flexibility to include things that we can't on a claytoncountyga.gov site because of the rules associated with .gov. If we have the .org, the county owns it, but we can put things on there when it comes to sponsorships or partners with, in the commercial um, industry or, or however we want to do it. It gives us a little more flexibility. And so with that, I ask if you have any questions. Well, you definitely said a lot there, uh, but let me, do, let me say this. From the minute the COVID hit us, you know, you and your team had to adapt to a a new way of doing business. And we put a lot on you, but y'all answered that call and uh, you and your team did, has done a tremendous job. So I would like to just commend you for what you did then for the past year and what you're continuing to do. And you're being innovative and coming up with new creative ways to service this community and our departments better. So I thank you for that. Are there any questions for Mr. Brookins? I don't have a question. And I appreciate um, all that they have done and still do and, and, and with the uh, home visits and all that uh, I do, or Matthew, you know, always on it. I'm disappointed in this presentation. And I'll, uh, I would think that IT would be able to do more than some of these other presentations that have been done as far as us seeing it. You know, I know you're going to send it to us and we can read it and all that, but you know, I would love to have been able to follow you with that and to see the building and, and, and all that. You know, I don't necessarily want to visit right now. Maybe sometime down the road when, you know, things all look better. And the COVID is much better than everybody has the fascination and all. But uh, I can see any of that. So like I said, maybe it's just mine, maybe it's my glasses or whatever. But I, I was really a little disappointed in that. But thank you all for everything you've done uh, all along with the um, COVID and reaching out to everybody and, and, and just being on it. I really like the folks that I have worked with, with IT and all, but I, I'm just disappointed in the presentation. 
Any other comments? Questions? Yes. Oh, go ahead. Commissioner uh, Davis. Just thank you, uh, Mr. President, for just the innovation and where we're called to really begin to plan for the future for our county. Uh, I've seen a lot of other county systems, and I can say honestly that we are ahead of many, systems, of many other counties and municipalities. So for that, I just want to say thank you for, to you and your team, especially in the works of the uh, cybersecurity. We know that's a, an important issue that is addressing us today and is going to be addressing us <clears throat> in tomorrow and, and for the future to come. Um, that's where these criminals are going to make their money. So I just thank you for all the work that you've done in trying to create firewalls and infrastructures that are safe for our, our, our uh, government community. Commissioner Franklin. Yes. Uh, Thank you uh, as well um, for that detailed presentation. Um, I want to definitely give kudos where kudos is due, uh, especially just for simply getting our signatures all the same and consistent. I never forget when I came in in 2017. You know, I worked with various governments um, on the private sector side, but when I came to Clayton County and I saw everybody had a different sign off, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> so just the mere fact that we've gotten that done is really found good. And, and it's important because we are a communicating in an official capacity and people need to know that with that consistency level. The second thing I definitely want to give you kudos on is um, the fact that you all are having to serve so many departments. And one of the things that I take note of as we build new facilities and we build out programs that I'm not sure if we added on to folks that work in um, the IT division. You know, we always add on employees in other areas, um, but I'm not sure that we are keeping that in mind when it comes to the fact that you got to support the libraries, you got to support the um, different recreation centers, and now the new Flint River Community Center. Um, and you're having to support us as employees through COVID, uh, I would really like for us to be able to look at it from a comprehensive matter when we are adding all these divisions to make sure that the resources are, are, and support resources are also elevated to a level that will give you that opportunity to, um, to supply that, um, that level of support that's needed for us to be able to operate at a um, level that the public is, is expecting. Um, so I want to give you definitely kudos on that. And then another thing, because I know in, I think it was 2017 going into 2018 or 2019, the onboarding with Tyler Technologies, and I was vocal about, I didn't, I'm going to be honest, I still don't think they were the right company to choose. But at any rate, the bottom line is you work through a lot of hurdles with that. Um, and, and so you definitely deserve kudos for that in working through those hurdles. Now, with that being stated, though, there are a couple things that I do have questions on, and remember, I'm not an IT person. But the first is Click Clayton and the CRS system. Um, and we don't have to answer it in this work session, but I really would like for us to be able to provide, for you all to provide a concise manner in which we receive that data, we then transfer that data to the prospective departments, because too often we get comments that it's not working. And remember, I stated, we expand, but I'm not sure that we've added on to IT personnel. So it may be that we need more personnel that's dedicated to it. But I will tell you, I am apprehensive about getting people to sign up for Click Clayton because of the response time. And I'll be quite honest, I never forget I had a conversation with one of our folks at PD, and I was like, uh, when the last time y'all checked Click Clayton? And the question was, uh, what did you say again? <laughs> because they're focused on getting out and solving crime, but if we don't have the dedicated personnel to deal with it, then it kind of just sits out there. Um, so I do want to have an offline conversation with that. Also, um, there was one other thing. I think Clark Jackie Wells mentioned that there was some additional product that she needed, and I'm not sure if Mr. Chairman would be willing to speak to it, but she just brought it to my attention that it was brought to um, the operation side, that there was one additional piece that they needed to really be able to serve the public uh, in a manner that would be uh, efficient and effective. And maybe I'll just stop there for those two. Yeah, because I'm not familiar with that. Are you familiar with that? 
it, what I, the only thing that I know that she's that she has asked for that we have actually purchased and we're looking to implement for her is a way for people to text from the parking lot. They they text a phone number, um, and then they will be called when there's time their time to come into the courthouse to for deeds or whatever information that they need from the clerk's office. Okay, I don't no worry. I'll follow up with her on that because I just had a conversation with her about that and I, I tried to get that info from her earlier. The other question I have is about the um, public safety. I remember some time ago when we were dealing with the previous, what was his title? He was the county manager, I think it was, assistant county manager, but I remember sitting in on a meeting but we did a big rollout to 911, and there was gonna be this beautiful device or tracking system, um, not just about personnel, but tracking system for all of EMS. Did that ever get implemented? And that was including our police department, our uh, fire department, and sheriff department. Did that ever get implemented? Yes, ma'am. That, that is what we call MCT, uh, Mobile okay. Computer Terminal, and so that dispatch knows where all of the vehicles are, both fire and police and sheriff at all times and dispatching is done automatic on certain level of calls based on the closest unit um, and then level two and three calls I think it's how 911 does it are done by voice um, and the new radios will enhance that capability handheld radios for the individual officer to be tracked as well right yes the new yes the new radios will allow us to track the officer so once they leave the car we don't have any way to track yeah. them with the new radios we'll be able to know where they are one awesome one last question i promise well it might not be but anyway the um the one last question is in regards to the equipment coming from that world i know that things become obsolete as you said motorola at one point was the top of everything especially even blackberry was but as technology changes changes really fast and we know that in government we're usually either right at the curve or behind the curve of um the changes have we considered uh, going into a lease agreement instead of purchase, or do we have a lease agreement instead of purchase, which allows for us to be able to have that equipment upgraded on a regular basis? And I just don't know if you could share that with us, that would be great. The, the leasing program, I don't believe Motorola has one that would give us new equipment. I know that uh, PC and laptop makers do have that lease. I know Dell has a leasing program that allows us to upgrade every so often. Um, but the, the radios are, the, I mean, there's no real value to them once, they, once they're five or six years old. And so I, it's certainly something that we can explore, but I'm not aware um, right now of, of a Motorola lease program. And, and I will okay. say this. Are we going to stick with Motorola or go to a different company altogether? Well, we're going to stick with Motorola. The Motorola radios, we have a Motorola system. Um, and, and despite it being a standardized radio, a P25 standard system, um, there are some enhancements that Motorola includes that you don't have to use, but they are nice to have. And, and the uh, police okay. that we're going to The reason start. I say that is because um, I'm just, you know, I'll never forget one of my favorite experiences in moving to Georgia was working for um, a very kind of large company that we all know and call them sometimes. It used to be called uh, Bell Staff. Remember that company? Bell South Mobility. <laughs> I say that because Bell, people don't realize that Bell South Mobility was huge in Clayton County. They built their office here. And even though they were moved from one equipment piece to the other, the platforms, the support platforms generally still exist. They're just looking for us to move to the newer platforms. And unfortunately, I'll be honest, the older platforms work better than the newer ones. Kind of like that bag phone, it still works, believe it or not. The brick phone still works. So I would just like for us to just not take them at face value and dig a little deeper on that and, um, and have them give us some credits because we should have an assigned representative from them that works on keeping our business so that we don't have to keep coming so much out of our pocket every time they decide to do something different. So I would really like for us to dig deeper. And I wish this board would consider going into, um, what do they call it? Um, Work group, working groups or committees because that's one I would really be interested in. Well, we, we deal with, and I, I'm supposing you're, you're still talking about Motorola from, from an account and, and kind of getting our, our, making sure that we get the best deal. And we do work with our account executive a lot um, and, and make sure that we get the good pricing. 
Um, Good deal. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And the other, I like y'all pictures. They're very professional. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? All right, Mr. Uh, uh, Brookins. Uh, just kind of comment from Mr. Brookins. Uh, if you do begin to go out and look at other products, we need to make sure uh, what the support is for them. Because we got to remember, there comes a, um, a life expectancy where the company does not support upgrades and security for these devices and, and a lot of the other software and, uh, and devices that are out there. Yes, sir. I believe you're up for the second part now. So what I'd like to do is close this out and open it up full screen so everybody can see it if you'll just indulge yes, me just a minute. <laughs> um, just real quick too, I think for the board, we need to make a note that when it comes to communication devices, it falls under, it still falls under telecommunications and there are still some regulations in place. Again, that we just need to explore that. So I'll just kind of make a quick note of that. Committee through NACO? I am on the IT standing committee. I'm not on the telecommunications committee specifically. Okay. I'm going to add you to that if it's okay with you where you can listen in. Sure. Yes, ma'am. I've served on that one for uh, three years Okay, that's better. A whole lot better. <laughs> All right, so the next project um, that we have been working on is the Georgia Smart Communities Grant. Now, um, a lot of you, or all of you, we have done um, weekend meetings with you and your constituents on this project and how it, how it impacts the uh, county. So what I wanted to do today was just provide you an update as to where we are with the project. So, just. Okay, so the grant overview. Um, the grant is a partnership between Georgia Tech and the Atlanta Regional Commission. Um, they're doing it with counties in the metro area and counties across the state of Georgia. Uh, it allows um, counties and cities to uh, modernize and kind of look at ways that they can make some of their infrastructure smarter. And so what, um, what this allowed us to do was to envision and explore um, a plan that includes smart mobility and smart pedestrian access. We know that uh, mobility relating to walkability is a big deal. And we thought that this would be a great opportunity for the county to explore what we can do with that. Um, the county was awarded $80,000, and it required a $20,000 match, or a 20% match, which put it up to $93,750. And the purpose of it will be to develop a decision support system that will look at our, that will inventory our existing sidewalks and, and the infrastructure around it. Um, update the attributes of that sidewalk, so if it's there or not, how wide it is, the condition of it, where are the crosswalks, things like that, and then help us create a prioritization index that we can use later on. So as the county chooses to expand um, the sidewalk network, we'll have maybe not the decision-making way, but a way that provides some additional information as to um, how to best invest that, that infrastructure money. So why pedestrian planning? Why is it important? So what we're trying to do is create walking options for everyone in the community. Um, we want to ensure safer, more accessible walking in Clayton County. We want to tie walking and mobility improvements to quality of life, economic competitiveness, and health. And finally, we want to address the safety and equity issues by trying to decrease pedestrian fatalities and serious injuries. 
So <clears throat> I'm not doing this alone. Uh, we have a, a big team that's helping us with it. Um, our, our project sponsor is the Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Stanford. Um, again, I am the project lead on this. We also have Ms. Nicole Horn, the Youth Services Administrator. She's also responsible for our citizen engagement and uh, working with the students, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, Mr. Keith Rowling is the Assistant Director of Transportation and Development, and so they, he knows more about sidewalks than, than anybody, and so it just made sense to have him on the team as well. And then we have the GIS team working in the background, providing the data, um, updating the data, and making the data available. From the Georgia Tech side, so we partnered with three different researchers from Georgia Tech who are helping us with this. Um, our lead researcher is Dr. Arthi Rao. Um, she's coming at the project from a health and wellness standpoint, um, and her and Dr. Catherine Ross work together on that. And then Dr. Ramsel Gunsler um, is, is the one who's really hot and heavy into the sidewalks. He's doing the inventory and the attributes, and he's the one, him and his assistant, are the ones working with the students. So <clears throat> what it is that we're trying to do is to develop this asset management system. So we're referring to the sidewalks as an asset. Um, identify maybe some smart technologies that we can put on it. Um, and then, like I said earlier, that project prioritization where we can know where best to put it. Where can we invest a little bit and get a lot of results? So what we've done so far, so it was awarded to us in September of last year. Um, for the first few months was mostly research gathering and kind of working through and planning the project. Um, so we've, we're, during that time, we conducted stakeholder engagement sessions with each of you, as well as with some of our city councils. Uh, specifically, I, we met with Forest Park and Jonesboro with their city council. Um, but we've had other conversations with other cities as well. Um, we have hired 28 Clayton County High School students. And so these high school students, were, this is where a bulk of the grant funding is going to pay these high school students as part-time county employees. Um, and they are gathering the information. They are doing the quality assurance and quality control of the information as it gets into the system. And then hopefully, if things go well, we'll be able to get them out on the street where they can gather some street, street level information and, and take some, um, get, gather some photographs from that. Um, additionally, we're utilizing our Click Clayton app to receive reports from the citizens. And so we've added a category um, where a citizen can, can download the Click Clayton app and you're out and you want, think there's a sidewalk you, you want somewhere, you take a picture of it, it takes your GPS coordinates and transmits it back to the, to the county so that we know exactly where it is that you are, where you, want that, where you think that sidewalk should be. If there's a sidewalk in disrepair, same thing. Snap a picture of it, send it to us, we'll add it to the list of, sometimes they might just come out and fix it if it's a repair problem, but if there's something there that's significant, then it would become part of this project. Um, just things like that. Um, we're also discussing how we can do a community event around information gathering and neighborhood participation. Now what that means is that we have had several, several um, citizens reach out to us um, asking how can they help, how can they be involved in this project. And so what we're looking to do is create an event where they can go out into their community in an organized manner and submit information back to us so that we can add this and it can be part of that, that greater data um, um, database that we're making or, or managing. Um, as well as getting other, you know, our youth commissioners involved, just trying to, trying to get the community to see that they do have um, a stake in this. This is not just a regular, you know, run-of-the-mill government study. We actually want you involved. We want your input and we want your information and we want to know what you, what you want. Now, one of the important caveats I have to tell people when we give this presentation is it's not a promise of funding for a sidewalk and it's not a promise that you will have a sidewalk there just because you send it in. Um, but what it does do is it makes, makes it known that there is citizen interest in this area for a sidewalk. And so the bulk of this project right now, this, this year-long project goes until September of this year, is we're focusing around sidewalks and schools, um, the MARTA transit stops, shopping areas, and public buildings. So as you can see, these are some of our students. Uh, some of them do come into the building and, and work. 
Um, others you can see behind them are on Zoom. Um, and so we, we have the students, they work five days a week, two hours a day, three hours a day, depending on what their schedule is, um, looking at this information from Georgia Tech. We've gotten some really great compliments on our students from Georgia Tech that are actually their, the results that they're getting from, Georgia, from, from our, our students are much better than they would get from undergraduate students at Georgia Tech. So we're, we're, um, we're happy about that. We got, a, we got a lot of good kids that work for us and are real happy with the job that they're doing. So just as an example, <clears throat> so the image on the left is an, is an information that we got, that somebody submitted, it was Mr. Brown, from Click Clayton. And so they're asking for, you know, they want a sidewalk in this area, and he tells us why. It's, um, it's a main road of travel, cars drive through at high speeds, and in this particular instance, he comments that it, it's close to two schools, elementary school, so Callaway Elementary School and um, Kendrick Middle School. And so we know that when we were looking at this request, we know that the area in red is what he asked for. And so, and according to the information that our Transportation and Development Department has, the steeps and the slopes of the area in red that they're asking for on Cardinal Lane is too high. But we could, just as an example, and I'm not saying we're going to do this, I'm just trying to give you guys, um, just let you understand the visual or, or what we're trying to do. The white area is an area that we looked at that we think we could put a sidewalk in that would benefit the community. We could put that much sidewalk in, it would cost about $80,000, and then you have a sidewalk that connects two schools in the community. So this is the information that we're looking for. We want, to know, we're, we want to know what do the citizens want to see, and then how can we make that happen later on. So the next 90 days, <clears throat> we will be completing our digital survey that will be sent out. It's actually being created by a lot of the questions by the Georgia Tech researchers. And they have a certain standard they have to meet that we're um, we have to make sure that this questions meet. Um, and once it's done and approved, then we'll submit, send it out um, through email. We will send it out um, through mailers with a QR code on it that people can just scan the QR code with their phone. It'll take them right to the, to the survey. Um, we're also planning to put out signs within the community where people are walking now with a QR code on the sign that you can scan the sign and you can go to the survey. It's a little long, probably takes about eight to 10 minutes to do. Um, but it is, all of the information in there is well worth it. It asks about um, investment priorities that the citizens would, would have. If you had this much money, how would you allocate it? The sidewalks to trails to whatever. And so we're really looking to get a lot of good feedback from the community with, with the survey. Um, phase two and three of the student data collection work. And so they've, they've done their flyovers of all the roads in Clayton County. And now they moved on to where all the crosswalks and curb cuts are and making sure that information is correct. Um, we actually are developing a, a presentation that we have to give on Friday to Georgia Tech and to some of the corporate sponsors of this project. And then, again, planning for an outside community event. So we want to we get a way to get everybody outside but involved in the project. And with that, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. All right. Any questions for Jason on this topic? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Franklin. Can you go back to the um, partners that are involved in this project, to that slide for me, Jason? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, right there. All right. If we could please, please add the Clayton County, I know Clayton is involved, but Clayton County Fire Department, Clayton County uh, Police and Sheriff's Office. Let me tell you why. We just had two pedestrian fatalities in one night alone. Uh, one would probably be reported through MARTA because it involved the MARTA bus on Highway 85. The other one, unfortunately, it joins in the, the, the numerous of uh, fatalities on 1941. And um, as I know there's no secret, people, you know that I'm extremely passionate about our county doing everything that we can within our power to um, help make our roads safer, but I do know that those are state roads. And 1941 is one of the busiest roads, not just for um, cars and vehicles, but for foot traffic as well as it has, along with 85, the most number of MARTA stops on an extended highway. 
1941 has surpassed Buford Highway in being the most dangerous highway. And we know that it's a thorough for folks as they're trying to get off of the expressway with all the construction going on there. But I got to give kudos to at least GDOT for coming together and making some changes. But we need more changes. And I would like to see that real-time data fed into this information, specifically on the fatalities, the accidents, and make sure that we take that into consideration. Because when I'm looking at this, I don't see anybody from the law enforcement side or EMS side participating in this process. And that data is key to making any changes to our roads. Yes, ma'am. And we are getting that data. We actually, in the presentation that we're giving Friday, we're not done with it yet. But we do have, we are importing the data that we can get it from the police department, from these different departments, from the transportation development that shows that. And so what we have is a heat map that's going to be generated of where the biggest areas of needs are. So we do have that information that I would be happy to share with you all. I don't have it right now. Our Georgia Tech researcher team is still working on it. But as soon as I get it, I'll be happy to share it with you all. Thank you so much. That's going to be key. Also, I'm going to set something up, hopefully, where you can come to the ATL Link Authority and share this info as well, because it will go into our plan, ARTP plan, which includes Clayton County, which is key. And I keep saying that there was a proposal to change sidewalks on the north end of town. And thank God we had a vote to make sure that our projects were included. If I can go back real quick to what I asked before, I do have more information. And it kind of ties into what we're talking about now. You were talking about the trails and the routes, which is really interesting. But what the clerk was specifically speaking of is a project that will allow for us to pay for 10 additional years of information through licensing and imaging. Because, you know, Clayton right now is the sought-after county for building, for projects, and our homes are really booming, selling for over $300,000 and $400,000 in the outskirts area, not just in Spivey, but in the outskirts area. So with that being stated, oftentimes the closing time or date has to be pushed back because they haven't had an opportunity to do all the research that they need in order to ensure that it's a clear title. So according to our clerk, if we were able to pay for an additional 10 years, it would give us the 50 years of imaging that's needed to be online to allow folks access to do their research, not just physically on county property, but as other jurisdictions have seen the success of it, to be able to do that research from their attorney's offices so that they can ensure to get those people at the closing table. And to keep it simple, that means that we get tax dollars quicker and faster. I will reach out to the Superior Court clerk and find out what that is. I believe it's something to do with the Georgia, the GSCCCA, the Georgia Superior Court Clerk's Authority, and that's who we, I know that we send our images up to them, and so I just need to, I don't have all the details, so I can definitely find that out. Awesome, and that's Clerk Jackie Will. Yes, ma'am. Will, sorry, Wills. Thank you. I don't know if I got any other questions. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Brookins. Thank you for the tremendous amount of work that you are getting done. All right, let's go to the text amendment for resolution 2021-39A. Uh, establish a moratorium on the acceptance of applications related to the development of new construction single family homes. Mr. Ajiki. Yes, sir. Uh, take this off. Chairman, Vice, and Commissioners, good evening. Um, this presentation is to uh, remedy uh, was actually the reason why <coughs> we put uh, the moratorium on, to slow down the applications we are getting for new residential construction, to make sure that we mitigate uh, the request to develop rental and leasing of lots and houses <coughs> in the county. Uh, so, um, the, leasing and less, uh, uh, the leasing and renting of homes in the county will not help the stability of neighborhoods. It adds to the things we are trying to solve. So by slowing it down, or, or rather making sure it does not happen, there are actually 
builders that have mentioned to me that they have building packages, programs that are single family development for rent. So it's not something that we are thinking is coming anywhere else. It's headed to our county. So this kind of, uh, the meeting I had was really them asking me if they can contribute to this text amendment. And my response was, it was not one for contribution. Therefore, right now, we want to um, create more stable neighborhoods in our county. So what we did was, what is the best way to put this in the process of what we're doing? And the best way to do it is the entry point of subdivision plots. There are two places in the process that we can enforce this and manage it. Um, so we went to the subdivision ordinance, chapter 86. And there are two places, you scroll up from, there are two places in chapter 86 for minor subdivisions and major subdivisions. It is it's a requirement that when, when you're coming in, that on the plat itself, that that text is on the plat. As you all know, after the preliminary plat, when you get to the final plat, that is when the plat is recorded in the courthouse that makes the document a legal document. Therefore, once we do that, we are serving notice to whoever gets engaged in that process at any time. There was an issue that was raised, can I explain to you? Uh, the issue was, what if the builder, or rather, what if the developer develops the land and sells it to the builder? It is incumbent on the builder to understand the plight they are, uh, what they are buying, because they are buying all of what is legally recorded on that plat. So by doing it that way, we will have the instrument to enforce this, because it on the plat has been recorded. So it's something we need. Uh, uh, moreover, <clears throat> we are beginning to get into the building season. The weather is getting warmer that we, I am um, kind of asking that the board allow this to come to the next uh, POC um, because it's actually a text amendment that is not a zoning, that's why we put it in, 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 in 86. It's not zoning, it's land development. That's so that we can um, be able to not stop the progress. We have, uh, we're beginning to pick up uh, different kind of residential type development that we don't slow it down. Um, so um, it's, I'm asking the board this evening and showing you the actual text we are putting on, uh, and we're going to be putting in, the, in chapter 86 and asking the board to allow it to progress to, the, to come to you guys the next meeting uh, for approval. What I'm hearing you saying is this does not require a public hearing. No, it doesn't. That's correct. Oh, it that it does not. not. It doesn't. Okay. okay. Yeah. Great. That's one of the reasons we chose the Land Development Code. Because it's in Chapter 86. 86, yes. Yeah, okay. Anybody have any? Are you, I'm sorry yeah, to I'm, cut you off. Are you I'm done, yeah. yeah. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Ejiki? I do. Uh, this is Hambrick. Commissioner Hambrick. Okay, does this require more than one vote uh, or just one meeting, one vote? No, it's going to be on the next uh, next business meeting, which is a regular meeting and does not require a public hearing. Uh, therefore, if we vote to pass it at our next meeting, it will be done and over with. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anybody else? I have a question. Commissioner uh, Franklin. Yes, and, and it's a piggy, first one is a piggyback on Commissioner Hamper's question. And before I go there, um, Mr. Uh, well, Patrick, thank you so much for this uh, because this is something that is really, really hurting us. I don't know how we're going to get around a few things to where I can tell you all right now. There was a house that went on the market for 20000 more than what it's actually worth 
and they received a cash offer directly from Open Door, and the house is right now on the market for a lease, and it's being rented. So that's already a challenge that we're dealing with. But as you're tackling this item, this item deals with the subdivisions as what happened in Henry County and what has happened in Clayton with our townhomes. I just want to know, just to make sure that these companies are not going to be able to come back after us, can we double-double check to see if maybe we should not consider doing it as a text amendment and advertising it to make it ironclad? I don't know, but I'm just asking, because we know when you start to impact and heed somebody's ability to make money, they don't want to do whatever they can. And I know one of those companies is a huge company, and they got a lot of money. So can we make sure that we are ironclad in the direction that we're taking to ensure that this can hold up? I'm going to answer. I hope that the county attorney joins in. First answer is that based on what we are charged to enforce on the land development side, we are, more importantly with this aspect, the comprehensive plan that we approved up to 2034 did not contemplate this type of land use. It did not contemplate it. We are not ready for this kind of product. This kind of product might be possible, but we're not ready for it because our complaint did not contemplate this at all. This will require land use amendments, and we have to really make sure we're not butchering the land pattern that was created, approved by ARC and greater. So from that point of view, the second point of view is that Chapter 86 does not require you to advertise anything. It's policy driven. It's the reason why we are putting it in the code. If you look at the sections we are putting it in, it's just a reminder to the developer during that process that we want you to put this on your plat to know that the developer or the builder will not start the process with renting in mind. So that is kind of the layman, non-attorney explanation. So do you want to join Gotcha. Thank you. Um, Mr. Reed. I would like to have a little bit more offline conversation because I see one little area that I would like to look at that we want to make sure we can share up that gap or a hole. Um, but yeah, just going into it, keeping in mind that the right to own property and to be able to enjoy that property is a constitutional right. So I just want to make sure we share this up as much as we can. This is good work, but I just want to double check a few things um, as quick as we can between now and tomorrow at 5 p.m. when we can even adjust it if need be on next Tuesday. Okay, Commissioner. We don't have a meeting next Tuesday, uh, Commissioner, just so well, that you know. the first Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, I just want to let you know that there's more time. The first Tuesday in April. Yeah, I was just pointing that out and let you know that there's more time for y'all to get together to get a resolution to what you're seeking. Um, any other questions for Mr. Ejiki? All right, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. And I inadvertently uh, overlooked the police department's reclassification. Uh, is Chief Roberts online or here? Okay, well, he's not online or ready to make presentation, so that concludes the agenda. Are there any announcements that any of the board members would like to share? All right, hearing none, we stand adjourned. Have a good evening.